Hi everyone and welcome to our special webinar series called Catching Carnivores where we focus on carnivore species that were captured on the Candid Critters Camera Trap Project. And I am Dr. Stephanie Shuttler and today I am here with Haley Boone and we are both scientists on the Candid Critters Project and we're here to talk to you today about bears. And bears are one of um, Haley's favorite species, so she just loves talking about them. So really excited to get started. And if you have any questions, we are live, so you can put your questions in the comment section of the Facebook Live or YouTube Live links. So let's get started talking about bears in North Carolina. First, uh, what species actually lives here in North Carolina? So, you want to go? So we actually have three types of species in North America. Um, of the three, the only one we actually have in North Carolina is the American black bear. The polar bear is going to be way up north in the Alaska area, and then the grizzly bear is more out west up north. Um, so one way, to, it's really often hard to distinguish a black bear or a grizzly bear if you're just looking at a camera trap photo you might not know. Uh, a good way to look is actually to look at the next uh, shoulder blade. So the grizzly has a hump on its shoulder whereas the black bear generally has a more flat shoulder blade. So if you are out west or you see a camera trap photo and you see a hump it's a grizzly. If it, there's no hump it's a bear, a black bear. And then another way is if you don't have a good look at the shoulder, look at the ears. So the black bear has a very pointed ear that kind of extends further away from the head. A grizzly has a more triangle ear that's closer to the face and not nearly as proportionate to, uh, to the, the head. It's, it tends to be smaller. The next is going to be the muzzle. So a black bear will have usually a different color muzzle, a little bit lighter, and it's more pointed than the grizzly bear. So some black bear basics. And can black bears be other colors than black? Yes. Um, so in some areas, uh, they often are um, can be lighter colored. So they can actually be um, a, a softer brown um, color, um, depending on area. In North Carolina, they're generally going to be black and maybe have a white spot on its chest. Um, Another big distinguishing factor is the size. So black bears generally are much smaller than grizzly bears. Um, we do have uh, records of a black bear male being around 800 pounds in Craven County, North Carolina. Um, here they generally live to be about five. Some do kind of go up to the tens, um, but five is the average. And they generally have huge home ranges. Uh, they're incredibly important for the ecosystem, often being scavengers. Uh, they rarely hunt real meat, uh, live meat, and then they're also huge seeds dispersers, whether that's through their scat or even just seeds attaching onto their body. So, uh, a bear is in the family order uh, carnivora, which is the same for other animals such as your mountain lions, your wolves, coyotes, but unlike these other animals, they are often, um, well, they're omnivores. So they actually have a mostly vegetarian diet, meaning they eat twigs, sticks, um, roots, berries, um, plants. Uh, they do get their protein a lot from invertebrates such as insects, um, bees being a large one, and ants. Uh, and as well as dead animals such as roadkill or things they find in the forest. And sometimes they actually uh, are more optimistic or opportunistic <laughs> where um, if they do come across a fawn or uh, an animal nearby that is living, they will actually go after it. I didn't realize that bears ate sticks. They do eat sticks. That's pretty crazy. Uh, especially in the winter months in the fall months where some berries might not come up they'll eat a lot of roots and sticks but unfortunately in addition to the sticks um, they do eat human food and trash so you you might have heard of the term garbage bear 
Um, or they might have gone to your campsite if you've gone camping to try to eat some food. Unfortunately, a fed bear is a dead bear, meaning usually a bear that has been fed by humans might try to continuously seek um, this food source, and after a while they might become more aggressive. If hazing or relocation doesn't work to kind of deter them from seeking out humans, sometimes they do have to be um, put to death um, just as a precaution to make sure they're not hurting humans or becoming a danger. Yeah, that's unfortunate when that happens. Black bears are actually really great climbers, especially the females and the young cubs. Males sometimes are a little too heavy to actually climb trees, but mom bears will actually start uh, teaching their cubs within the first few months actually how to climb. So sometimes if you, especially if you go out to the Smokies, if you look in the trees, you might actually see mom and cub um, in the spring months. Uh, they also den in trees. So if the bear doesn't weigh a whole lot, they can actually make little den areas inside old trees where mom and cubs can stay up there when they're sleeping in the winter. Okay, great. Now that we know some things about black bears, I'm going to talk to you about the history of black bears here in North Carolina. They were actually first found throughout the state, all different regions, the mountains, uh, the East Coast, the Piedmont area. But once Europeans started to colonize America, there started to be a decline of black bears. And this was caused by largely by three different things. Um, so first, uh, a lot of the forests were logged. They were transformed, especially into agricultural areas. And with that came hunting, um, either just for food source, but also the stigma that comes along with um, a lot of different carnivores that they can take livestock and also just people have a fear of bears. And the other factor that was really instrumental in causing the decline of black bears was the chestnut blight. Um, so bears depend a lot on chestnut trees and this killed a lot of the large mature chestnut trees, almost all of them in North Carolina by the 1950s. So from the 20s to the 50s, we really started to see a big decline in black bears in North Carolina. And around the 70s, um, people noticed this decline and groups started to get together to talk about how to save the black bears. And this actually involved um, a symposium at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And one of the strategies to bring back the black bears was to make bear sanctuaries. And uh, like Haley mentioned, black bears have huge home ranges. So if you are logging their forests and destroying their habitat, they have nowhere to live and they obviously won't repopulate. So creating these protected areas for black bears was really important to help them repopulate. And one of the most important areas uh, was Great Smoky uh, Mountain National Park. Um, it was one of the earliest bear sanctuaries established in the 30s and a really important stronghold for bears. But there are a total of 28 of them created across the state uh, to repopulate the bear population. That's really great. And these sanctuaries actually worked. A lot of times in conservation, you hear about animals declining and it's really hard to make uh, populations recover, but the bears in North Carolina are actually a really big conservation success story. And bears have made a huge comeback in North Carolina. So here's a graph from our partners, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. They um, help fund this project, and you can see that every year from 1980, we've had an increase in the bear population, where the red line represents the statewide population, and you can see the differences between the coastal areas and the mountainous regions. Um, but across the board, all of the populations have increased. So even though we started off with bears living across the state, nowadays you can mostly find bears in the mountainous areas, western North Carolina, and the coastal areas, so eastern North Carolina. And this is a map of bear range provided by the commission. It's on their website. And you can see the green areas are the black bear range that was in the 1970s. So this is when they were, um, they declined a lot and there weren't very many black bears left. 
but you can see the pink area, those are the most, the newest black bear um, habitat area. So black bears are actually expanding their range and that represents um, 2010. So you can see, even though they're on the east and west coast, they've started to expand their range back into the Piedmont where they used to be found. So how does the Candid Critters data match up? This is our statewide camera trap program run by people like you. We couldn't do it without you. We thank you so much for your work. Does it match up to what we see in the Wildlife Resources Commission map? So, so far we've had almost 1,500 bear sightings across the state. I just love this photo. I think it's so cute about a little pile of bear cubs. Um, so we have a lot of bear sightings across North Carolina and where are they found? You can actually look at this map on our homepage of our website, nccandidcritters.org. And this is an interactive map where you can look at the detection rates of bears, coyotes, and deer. And what the detection rate is, is simply the number of times an animal was seen divided by the number of camera trap days. So if you have a detection rate of one, this means you see a bear a day on camera traps on average. So when looking at this map, you can see the East Coast has some really dark areas and that represents 0.85 detections or more a day. So you can see Hyde and Dare counties have almost a bear detecting their camera traps every day. Whereas in the West Coast, it's, it's hard to see because of the coloration, but it is still a light green. Sorry, west, west part of the state, not West Coast. On the western part of the state, we still do get bear detections, but it's just not as frequent as what's seen in the east, eastern portion of the state. So it does seem like it's matching up um, a little bit to the, um, the North Carolina Commission's map, but just again, much more heavy detections in the eastern part of the state. And Haley is gonna tell us now a little bit about the differences between the mountain bears and the coastal bears. So um, the general vegetation or habitat in the coast and the, and the mountains kind of differs. So the coasts generally are gonna be your swamp areas, your wetlands. We have the Alligator National Wildlife Refuge, which we have some of our cameras. Um, and we have other areas that are more wetland based. Um, Black bears love swamps and wetlands. Uh, it, it provides really good cover. A lot of dense vegetation is in this area. They might not have great uh, tree coverage other than some longleaf pines, but it's still a really good place for them to get the food that they want. Um, also in the coast, we have a lot of agriculture lands. So when I was putting out some cameras, we actually found some scat, which was all corn. So and there were we saw at least 10 bears within a small little area so these agriculture fields all these bears love to come and just have a nice snack and they're able to put on a lot of weight which they need for the winter months um the coast also has a really huge population actually the largest in the in the world or at least in the in north america where they are but in the mountains they generally really like the large swaths of hardwood forest so your your oaks and your maple forests that take um that you can find in the smokies and other natural forests that are surrounding that area um, they also eat a lot of insects and vegetation but their main food source in the fall seasons are going to be your hard mass so your acorns so all these hard woods trees that you find there provide a really great source of food for these animals. Um, but a, a main feature that you see more in the mountains and the coast is a true hibernation. So hibernation is when these animals are sleeping for most of the winter, if not all the winter. So true hibernation is undistributed. Sleeping for a continuous amount of time without waking up. They're not even defecating or um, urinating during this time. Usually they're just asleep. In the coast, because it's t generally warmer, um, this true hibernation doesn't necessarily have to occur for the males. Sometimes they're actually active in the winter months, especially on the warmer days, going out to scavenge for food. This doesn't really occur nearly as much in the in the mountain areas because we have a lot of snow and it generally is colder. 
Yeah, and hibernation, um, it's not like they just decide to sleep for a really long time, right? It's they, it's actually a physiological change that happens in their body. So their heart rate slows down, everything slows down, and it's a way that they can cope mm-hmm. with, with really cold winters. It's a it's super interesting thing that happens in, in animals. If they didn't actually pack on all the weight from the hard mass or even some of the agricultural fields, they wouldn't actually be able to survive on the winter. All that stored fat is what kind of continues to feed them through this winter month, even though they're not eating. So we can't hibernate even if we tried. Unfortunately not. (laughs) And I just wanted to go back to the Candid Critters map. We've talked about the mountain bears and the east east coast bears. But if you look at the map, there is a lightly shaded county in the Piedmont area. So according to the commission's website, we're not supposed to find bears here. And actually, a couple of years ago, I remember hearing on the news that there was a black bear in Raleigh. So I wanted to look into this and to see, was it a mistake? Did we accidentally enter a black bear and it was really something else? Or was there a black bear detected in Alamance County? So I dug into the eMammal website and indeed we did find a black bear in Alamance. This is um, pretty uh, much a black bear. You can't really dispute that. And um, so yeah, we do get black bears in the Piedmont. And most of these bears are dispersing males. Um, so when males become adults, they leave their their mothers and they go to find their own territory. Um, a lot of times they'll have to um, disperse long distances to be able to um, find their own place. So that's where you get a lot of the movement in the Piedmont area. However, the commission has reported detections of bears in all 100 counties of North Carolina, including sows. So it's not completely unheard of to find um, an established black bear in all counties of, of North Carolina. And with the successful conservation story of black bears here in North Carolina, they're not only expanding their range into the Piedmont area, but they're also expanding into more urban areas. Black bears have actually started to adapt to people. And actually, in some cases, they might even prefer to be around people because in other areas they might be hunted. But if they're in suburban areas where there's no hunting, then they don't have to they don't have to worry about that. And if they can raid people's garbage cans and get other food sources easily, that can attract them to those areas. This picture happened before Candid Critters uh, took place, and I work with a lot of teachers and trying to get um, our camera trapping project in their classroom. And this camera trap was set up at Valley Springs Middle School in Asheville. It's a very suburban school, and this, they obviously caught it on their camera trap. It's only about 300 meters behind their school. And I talked to the teacher about it. And one day they actually had to have a lockdown because there was a black bear visiting campus. So they're definitely moving into um, more human used areas and, and have started to adapt to people. This is a really cool sequence that we've got on our camera traps just recently from McDowell County. And so bears are moving into people area and they're aware of us. Bears tend to be actually shy. They don't really want to be around people. They prefer to um, just live their own lives and and not be bothered by people. And here you can see that. This is a a mama bear with her calf and it's on a camera trap set by a trail. And you can see both her and her her cub. Sorry, I said calf. I meant to say cub. I worked on elephants before, so I always say calf. I meant to say bear cub. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they're both looking and you can see then a hiker comes by and if you look at the timestamps this is super cool um, there's the bears looking and there's a hiker just two minutes after and I wonder if this hiker knew that there were bears um, on that same path just two minutes before or if they quietly walked away I actually have really bad bear luck. Even when I was setting up camera traps in the East Coast where there's tons of bears, I have only seen two bears and both times they were far away and in my car. And one I did see in the cornfields. But <laughs> Haley, she's, she's um, seen bear on foot a lot. So what should somebody do if they're on a trail and say the bear's on the trail with them? How should they interact with the bear? So for some reason, every time I'm almost to my car, there's always a bear in between me and my car and though it seems like such a like the faster way to 
get to my car is just to go where the bear is. But the reality is the bear generally will know you're there, whether that's smell or just hear you, hears you coming. But what you need to start doing is one, start talking to it. If you're talking to it, it knows you're there, but it also can read the tone. It can know if you're a threat. If you're kind of silently going up to it, it's going to be put on edge and more likely to kind of figure out what is going on, whether that's to go towards you, which you don't want, or away from you. The next thing you need to start doing is to give it space. So if I, if it's between me and my car, I still need to back up. I'm not going to not look at it. I'm always going to go ahead and look at it, make eye contact with it. I also need to figure out whether or not it's a mom with cubs. If I'm in between the mom with cubs, it gives her more reason to approach me. So if I can figure out where the cubs are, are or if it's by itself, I'm going to start moving, backing up slowly about a football field's length away from this bear. Meanwhile, that bear is probably going to slowly start going away or it's going to start running away. If the bear starts to approach you, it generally will start giving you some signs. It will either make some gruff noises or make some vocalizations, usually within its chest. Um, or it might even start mock charging you or starting to approach you. If this occurs, and, and even though you're backing up giving it space, start yelling at it. If it gets even closer, start clapping your hands really loudly, start getting big and eventually start to haze it. Um, bears generally do not want to engage in an activity that causes them injury if it's not with for another bear. Um, so generally, if you start hazing it, it's going to go off and away. Um, it does not want to deal with that, um, anything that could potentially hurt it. And with haze it, you mean like throw things at it or what, what, what do you mean so by that? It really depends on how close it is. So generally, if it's making noises, I'm going to start clapping my hands, waving my arms, mm -hmm. looking like I'm much bigger than I am. If it is within like 10 feet from me, I'm going to start throwing things at it. Um, generally, it would just be a rock or um, mm -hmm. just so it knows that I'm willing to fight back. Um, if it does come in contact with you, though it's extremely rare, um, that's when you would fight back. A black bear is one of the bears that you do want to actually fight back. If it was a grizzly, you would probably, you would want to lay down, scrunched up, and protect your neck. But with a black bear, you have a better chance of just fighting it off than not. And you're not supposed to run from black bears or from bears in general. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons why I love working on elephants because you can run from them. If they charge you, they mostly do false charges too, but if they charge you, you can run. With yeah. bears, you're supposed to stand your ground. And do not try to climb a tree. As I said before, they're fantastic climbers and they will scale that tree faster than you can try to climb that tree. So your best bet is to back up and be loud and talk to it and make sure that distance is known. And I'm terrible at climbing trees. Me too. <laughs> um, but I just also want to point out that within la over 100 years, only 63 people have been recorded as killed by a black bear. Though there are attacks, um, most of these attacks are due to a mother with cubs, um, the people who are trying to feed the bear, and, or you have an unleashed dog. Um, if you're going on a trail and your dog is off leash and it comes across a bear, that bear is going to feel threatened and often might attack your dog or eventually maybe attack you. So you're, the best way to avoid having issues with any kind of bear um, to even prevent this is to want to have your dog leashed and maybe even have a conversation on the trail. If you're by yourself, like, I'm not gonna lie, if I'm trail running by myself, sometimes I'll sing out loud. It's okay. <laughs> uh, it'll keep the bears knowing where you are, and though you might not, you might lose a chance to see a bear, it's better to take that precaution when you're, especially if you're by yourself or there's only two of you, than mm -hmm. run across a bear at a very close distance. And when are you likely to see a bear? So if you um, look at this map, which we actually got from our Candid Critter data, 
um, you can see that there are two peaks. So generally around 7 a.m. and about 1900 or 7 to 8 o'clock. So that also is when usually the sun is going up or the sun is going down. So during these dusk and dawn periods, bears are generally on the move. Though, um, there are um, recordings where bears might actually change their time of activity based on hunting season. So if hunters are kind of being more active during the dawn dusk periods, then the bears might move to be active a little bit earlier on or a little bit later just to avoid people. So they really don't want to get involved with people if they don't have to. So as the Candy Critter uh, project is a camera trap project, we do get them on the cameras and they are very curious creatures. They love to investigate the cameras, whether that's maybe the sound the camera is making or even the smell of the batteries, they like to go up and investigate. Unfortunately for that, they do sometimes destroy our cameras or like to swat our cameras or move them around. Um, to get a better shot. In fact, we actually sometimes have to use this box, um, <laughs> our bear lock box, and our camera traps go inside it, and it's a little bit harder to keep them from actually breaking our cameras like you saw before. But in this footage, you can actually see one, a bear coming to investigate, but if you look at the gray photo sequence, that's actually a female bear munching on our cable cord. <laughs> and um, as I'm actually in bear, uh, I'm doing a project with the Kinda Critters where I'm sending out cameras, I'm about to go in bear territory, so the first thing I'm going to do is put these guys up, because it's better to be protective with your camera traps than have your bear eat your camera traps. So, um, our camera trap data that we're getting from Kinda Critters, um, we do get a lot of bears, so we can actually use that data to kind of investigate what's going on with our bears throughout uh, their areas that they're going to. Um, for example, my project, though I'm focusing on fawns, I'm also trying to see how they interact with, uh, how bears interact with fawns. So currently we have decoys going out and we're actually going to test to see boldness of bears and then also how long does it take a bear to actually find a fawn using these fake decoys. It's also important to uh, try to figure out um, where they are, how they're interacting with the environment in regards to where people are, but also since a lot of North Carolina is the habitat still changing, we had the woolly adelgid come out and decimate some of our hemlock groves. So the landscape is constantly changing, so we also need to continue to update uh, where these bears are and what they're doing in regards to this fragmentation to continue to figure out how to manage and uh, work with these bears. So, like Haley said, this camera trap research that you're conducting is so important. And without it, we would have never made that discovery in Alamans County. We, sure. we were surprised by that. We're, we're scientists, and I had to double check with the whole team and look up the photos and make sure we saw a bear in Alamans County. So you can still help us out. You can see we still even don't have some counties sampled yet. And help us run camera traps. There's still a little bit over a year left of the project. And help us detect more bears across the state of North Carolina. And now um, that concludes our session on bears and we're gonna open up to uh, live questions. And I believe we have a couple already. So a honey bear is just a kind of a nickname given to bears. Um, bears really like uh, things that are sweet. They're very curious and if they can come across a hive um, they'll try to eat the honey because that's free food. It's relatively easy to get to. They generally have pretty thick skin so though bees can sting them and it can irritate them, it's not nearly as bad as a feel than what we get. Um, 
when we get stung. They actually do eat bees as well. So it's kind of, they'll eat the honey and then also eat the bees. And berries do eat tomatoes. They have guts of steel. Um, <laughs> they'll pretty much eat anything. Um, I actually had a friend uh, tell me once that they, they had some berries break into the garage and try to eat their life preserver. And uh, they'll try, yeah, so garbage bears is a real thing. They'll try to eat garbage as much as possible. So yes, bears do eat tomatoes as, as well as many other things. So our first two questions were about what bear, if, if, what are honey bears and if bears eat tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Um, and just to add about the honey bears, one of the ways that you can trap bears, like for research, is using donuts. Yeah. So they like, they really do like sweet things. Yeah, they, uh, a, some of uh, our researchers actually have a deal with a, a grocery store to get their expired pastries. So they'll put them out. Um, but actually, to uh, make sure that they're not eating uh, human goods, they're actually making scentlers which usually are like a can that you can spray um, of donut flavored scents. <laughs> so you don't actually need to carry a whole bunch of pastries in the field, which if you already have a whole bunch of cameras and sometimes even a collar, it's adding extra sticky. Well, and these are heavy too. Yeah. These are really heavy. Yeah. It, it kind of makes a mess. So uh, people are getting really creative on ways to attract um, bears. And you might want to use the donut spray for personal reasons, too. It might, yeah. it might send you You off. always want to smell like donuts. So. And we had a couple of questions um, before webinar started, too. Um, so, And I want to know this. Why do bears eat sticks? Do you know? So sometimes it's out of curiosity. They're just bored, and there's a stick up in the air, and they're just like, I'm going to either scratch my back on it, or they might even nibble on it, consume it. Um, it Though it's not super dense in calories, it's still a snack that they can eat and it's fiber. Um, but in the early spring when there's not that much vegetation, they do eat a lot of sticks and roots to try to get gain weight until they actually get proper food source to start putting on some weight. One of our questions is from Charlotte, and she asks, what is the approximate number of bears living in Forsyth County? I personally don't know off the top of my head, um, but what I can tell you is you can go to the, the map on our website, and you can click on it and look at the detection rate. So if you actually click on the county, it's an interactive map, and it will tell you the daily detection rate of um, deer, bear, and, and coyotes for that county. But I don't, do you have a better estimate of how uh, many bears there I are? I don't know in regards to that county specifically. Um, another source is because this project is uh, funded with, by the commission, the North Carolina Wildlife Commission, they also have a lot of information. and They have great estimates on the population and harvest mm -hmm. rates. So it's a really good resource to get that county level information that you're interested in. Yeah, and you can just find that on the commission's website. Yep. They just have search bears. A, yeah, they have a lot of information on on black bears. And now our screen is showing the the interactive map. So that's right on our homepage with um, with nccandidcritters.org, and you just hit the get started button and click on whatever county you want, and you can find information about those three different species there. Okay, we have a couple of more um, questions on black bears. How long do the cubs, not calves, stay with their parents? So generally, um, a mom is going to have her cubs for about 17 months. Uh, and usually she'll have twins. Sometimes she'll have tri triplets, but the rate at which that third cub survives, unfortunately it's, it's relatively low, but it does happen. So sometimes, and our camera trap photos will get three cubs, um, but generally it's two or one. And though the term bear hug is a thing, um, mothers are actually not super attached. They're generally more distant with their cubs than uh, people might think. Um, 
and uh, she'll start t trying to teach her cubs how to survive in uh, the wilderness a little bit more, especially like putting them on trees, having them come down, um, some tough love on the bare front. And in this webinar, we talked about the differences between the black bears in the mountains and the East Coast, um, but are there behavior differences? What do you, do you, what do you think, Haley? So, um, because out in the coast you do have them going to a lot of agricultural fields and um, you, people might see them on trails, I would say that they're probably more habituated or just used to humans a lot more mm -hmm. because they're going on human land. Um, that being said, we do have national parks and national forests where in those areas that they're in where they're kind of closer to trails or areas that kind of overlap with like visitor centers um, or the main drag, uh, pairs are going to be very habituated. In fact, sometimes they'll actually go to campsites um, hunting for food or just they smell something really good and they want to come and investigate. Um, so that being said, a, when you do visit places with bears, make sure you pack out everything you have and never try to feed a bear or any animal out there. Yeah, I would echo that answer. I I don't I'm not sure if there's a lot of bear differences between the mountain bears and the and the east coast bears in terms of behavior. I think it more has to do with where they live. Mm -hmm. Is it a suburban or a rural area or is it a protected area? Because animals act differently. They they know their threats. Mm -hmm. So they know in the protected areas that they're not going to be hunted. And um, even if they are eating in um, crops, if they're really heavily hunted by people there, they just might be more aversive to people. So it totally depends on the conditions around them. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the Valley Springs bear was in a suburban area where there's no hunting. So maybe that bear is a little bit more relaxed around people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are the main differences is what type of habitat they live in within the yeah. those areas and I also think age also has a huge impact and whether or not it has cubs so mm -hmm. um, a younger bear might not have a territory established so they're more likely to start venturing out or a younger um, adult bear venturing out so they might have a greater chance coming across uh, a suburban area than a more adult bear that already has its territory locked down and is protecting that area um, a mother with cubs might pick a area because they might have a richer food source or a better denning site than another area. So it, it really depends on what habitats in the area, what's a food source, and how frequently are they going to interact with humans. Humans um, across all bears um, species have a huge impact on what their behavior is becoming. And our final question is, what do we think is the most important thing about black bears? Do you, do you I'm going to have you go first. Okay, I, my answer um, is, on, is not really about the black bears. It's how humans interact with black bears. And I think we've emphasized that a lot. But um, black bears here have been a conservation success story. And honestly, like one of the factors that um, is limited for black bears here, which means prevents the populations from growing, is what we call a social caring capacity. So basically, mm -hmm. how willing are we to have bears live around us? And a lot of that has to do with bear behavior. And like we mentioned over and over and again, feeding bears changes their behavior. So I think the most important thing about black bears is to keep them wild. If we wanna keep them a conservation success story, They've been finding food for hundreds of years on their own before people came and, um, and started living in human-dominated landscapes. And they can continue that way, and they need to continue that way. If we, if we need to keep their population alive, that's what we need to do. So I think that's the number one most important thing about bears is to, is to help them, is to not feed them. So oh, I think that's a really good point. And I, I, so wait, I take your answer. I feel like, oh no, 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 I got my own answer. Um, but for me, um, black bears are one of the largest mammals in North Carolina. We used to have mountain lions. We, our red wolf populations are, are kind of dwindling. So they're really one of the last, other than coyotes, the last like large mammal that is a, in the order of carnivora. 
Um, and to see one of these animals in person is really truly a fantastic sight. It's kind of weird how gracefully they can go in the forest even though they're this large clumsy creature. And as somebody who does a lot of camera trap work, I think it's so interesting to get a bear because they're always moving my cameras around. Mm -hmm. And though like it's slightly irritating having my camera moved to a new location, like it's super interesting to see an eyeball staring at you <laughs> and rather than just another deer photo. <laughs> so I, I just think them themselves um, is a really great thing and I really hope that one day if you have not seen a bear already that you get to see the chance to see one. Well, I hope I get to see one closer. Still from a car, though, but closer. Least, yeah, <laughs> either from a car or at least a, a football field length away. Okay, well, that's all of our questions. And if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below, and we'll answer them on the Facebook or YouTube page. And thank you so much for watch watching. <laughs> thank you.